This video is going to explore another of the prompt words which you might come across in the Art and Design Studies part of the course at National 5. Today we're going to be looking at media handling. Media is another word for materials. So we're thinking about the art materials that the artist uses, but not just what they're using, how they're using it. Today we're going to explore different types of materials and different ways in which the artist uses them. Hopefully this will give you some vocabulary that you can use if you're asked to discuss the media handling and techniques of an artist. So, on this slide, you can see a variety of different materials which you will know about and probably have used in the practical part of art and design course. So, you'll see some examples of dry media, wet media and 3D media. These are the things which the artist uses to create the artwork. In this slide here we can see some examples of how the different media are used. So the paint may be applied using brush strokes. A 3D piece of materials may be used by carving or scoring or modelling into it. We're going to take a look at these in a bit more detail. So we're firstly going to look at dry media. So that might be pencil, coloured pencil, it might be charcoal, oil pastel, chalk pastel, anything which um, doesn't require you to use water. So we're going to think about if an artist is using those types of media, how might we be applying that to the paper or to the canvas? We're going to think about things like blending the media. Are they smudging? Are they smoothing the material? Or are they leaving visible marks? Are they scratchy marks or lines which maybe suggest a texture? Dry media can be used in lots of different ways and to create different effects. Next up, we're going to look at wet media. So that's when we're thinking of more paint. It might be watercolour or oil paints or acrylics. And what we're thinking about here is the way in which the brush strokes help to apply the paint to the paper or the canvas. So there may be artworks that you're looking at where artworks are not invisible. They might be blended and smooth so that it almost looks like water. However, artworks that you see where the brush strokes are very visible, obvious, they might be applied in an expressive painterly way, quite roughly and directional to suggest energy and texture in a piece of artwork. Then we come to 3D media. So this might be clay, might be bronze, it might be a piece of wood. And again, artists have different ways in which they handle the media that they're using. It might be that they're carving into it and taking parts of it away. They might be modelling with it, sculpting and adding parts onto it to create different shapes. They might be soldering to join different parts together or moulding shapes. And again, usually in the question, it will tell you underneath the media that has been used. You need to use your knowledge of all these different types of materials to think about the words and the techniques that the artist would have used, depending on which media they have chosen. We're going to have a quick look at some painting techniques now. These are just some of te the techniques you might um, see in an artwork where the artist has applied the paint in a particular way. In this next slide, we can see seven examples of different types of painting techniques. I'll run through each of them individually, and then you might want to go and have a look for different paintings which use these techniques in them. The first one is called impasto. And it helps me to remember this by thinking of that word past or paste in the centre and thinking of the paint being thick like a paste, almost like putting um, icing onto a cake. You can see the texture, but you can see the thickness of it clumping together on the surface. This is impasto technique. Scumbling is a technique which involves dabbing the brush gently and carefully to make a textual blending effect. 
dry brush is another technique which artists may use to create a textural effect. So using very little water, but paint which has been dried off to create those um, rough marks on the canvas. Wet on wet would be used in watercolour paints. And again, that's when the artist drops colours into different colours when they're wet. And the water does the work of blending the colours together. The colours almost look as if they're bleeding into each other, as you can see in this example. Scraffito is a scratching technique. Again, the paint's applied very thickly. And as you can see in here, the artist scrapes it back off to create that texture. Pointillism is when the artist uses small, tiny brush strokes to create marks. They may combine different colours together so that when you look, the dots and marks all blend together, together to create a depth of colour. Broken colour is another way of layering colours to again provide depth. So there might be two quite contrasting colours layered up to give that real richness of colour. We're now going to have a look and have a think about how the artist uses this media handling to create different techniques. And they might use media handling to create a particular mood or to create texture, as we've talked about. Or to... So let's have a look at how this artist uses media handling to create different moods, texture, emphasize different parts of the painting. So we can see that the media handling, the way that the paint's been applied in the sky, is quite different to the media handling which we see in the field or in the trees. It maybe helps to create a calming mood in the sky, the swirling, whirling brush strokes and the clouds in the sky help to create quite a calming atmosphere. Whereas the small, intricate brush strokes used in the trees and the field help to keep that texture and really draw an emphasis to that part of the painting. These are the kind of things that you want to pick up on when you're exploring the media handling of an artist. This is quite a different painting. Um, the media handling is much less obvious. The paint has been applied much more smoothly and it's almost impossible to see the brush strokes because they've been so blended. Again, that perhaps helps to create the mood that we see in here. We can really focus our emphasis really drawn to the figure and to the muscles and the strength of that person because we're not distracted by the way in which the, the paint has been applied. And the same in the sky. We're really um, able to, to look at the texture, the softness of the sky, the lightness of the cloud, because it's been so well blended and smoothly, to not distract us from the main part of the painting. You may also be asked to talk about the media handling in a piece of art, so a sculpture or a piece of public art. This piece of art here has been made in pots and pans. It's important to remember told what media the artist has used. So it's really important to read that information underneath the photograph. So again, you can think about how the media here has been used, how it's been um, worked to, to create the curved shape form of this. Why would a structure, a public art structure outside, require something that's heavy and metal? Um, does it only need to withstand the, the weather, the elements? Does it only need to be strong? So all of these things, the way that it's been soldered together or joined together, are really important points that you want to try and bring up in your answer. So now we've had a bit of an exploration of media handling. You should be quite confident with what media handling means. What we'd like you to do now is to have a look at three more artworks. And initially, we'd like you to start to just make some notes about the kind of things that you noticed about the media handling in these artworks. So here are three artworks. They're all very different and they use different media handling techniques. Don't worry if you don't know what materials specifically have been used, as long as you can justify your points with the reasons why you think that, then you will get the marks. So start off by doing some bullet points or a spider diagram to, to get your ideas. And then once you've done that, what we'd like you to do is to take one of your points each of the artworks and start to think about that structure, the what, where, 
why structure and really flesh out your point so that you would get a mark for it. So what technique has the artist used? Where do you see it in the painting? So it might be in the sky or in the clouds or in the face and the facial features. And why do you think the artist has used that? What impact has it had on the artwork? Can't wait to see your responses.